As you know, since the advent of combined uh, antiretroviral therapy, morbidity and mortality in human immunodeficiency virus patients have significantly been reduced. But liver-related deaths nowadays are the leading causes of death in HIV-infected patients despite some recent studies that indicate that there is a decline. Next slide, please. The majority of the antiretroviral drug classes used for the treatment uh, of HIV have an intrinsic potential to cause hepatotoxicity, which may be induced through various mechanisms. Liver, the related disease in HIV-infected patients, is mainly due then to co-infection with either hepatitis B virus or hepatitis C virus. Patients triply infected with HIV, HBV, and HCV have a 12-fold higher incidence rate of end-stage liver disease compared with HIV un- or mono-infected patients, even in the modern art uh, era. So let, uh, let us uh, talk about a few words of morbidity of art uh, therapy, the adverse events, if effects of art therapy on the development of liver impairment have been debated, as you know, for years, and most reported to be acute, mild, and asymptomatic. But some uh, antiretrovirals have commonly been associated with alterations in liver function, hyperbilirubinemia, severe steostosis, fibrosis development, non-serotic portal hypertension. So there are a, a, a tension to an intention to avoid certain uh, hepatotoxic drugs like D drugs, zidovudine, didanosine, the um, no, N NRSTIs, uh, namely nevirapine, and finally um, uh, atazanovir protease inhibitors. Um, let us have another slide, please. Uh, HIV therapy has evolved, as you know. Treatments are now safer, more effective, and widely accessible. So uh, antiretroviral therapy proved to have a beneficial role on liver-related outcomes. And the publication from Brow and uh, others, collaborators, uh, showed uh, that effective sustained control on HIV replication may attenuate liver disease. By what kind of, of, of uh, uh, action? By reducing inflammation, hepatic inflammation, reducing progression, fibrosis progression in liver, and decompensated hepatic decompensation in the setting of HIV co-infection. Also, the uh, fact that uh, tenofovir and tricitabine lamivudine is included in uh, uh, regimens, art regimens, there uh, has been also uh, demonstrated that there is an, uh, an improvement in immune function and it is a, a, a relationship between uh, this improvement and direct uh, antiviral effect on HBV. Let us uh, talk about morbidity of co-infection among HIV-infected patients. Three to five million people are co-infected with HBV, but imagine 10 million, 30% with chronic HCV. So HIV replication and associated immune dysfunction may itself cause liver injury and accelerate liver disease progression in the setting of co-infection. Treatment is dramatically important to achieve prolonged HIV suppression 
immune reconstitution, and reduced mortality from AIDS. So HIV patients can live longer. But what consequences do we expect from longer survival of HIV-infected individual complications? Complications of chronic viral hepatitis, HBV and HCV, and stage liver disease and hepatocellular carcinoma. In HBV, HIV infected people, more advanced liver disease stages have been associated with higher morbidity and mortality. To what extent? Uh, more than art and viral suppression reduces end stage liver disease, we still don't know. HIV therapy itself has dual activity against HBV. Tenofovir, this uh, publication of Cozy and Reinberger, show that uh, tenofovir with or without uh, lamivudine or antricitabine can achieve prolonged suppression of HBV DNA and reduced liver disease outcomes. HBV suppression has also been shown to reduce hepatic decompensation in triple, triple infected patients. And the risk, what about the risk of hepatocellular carcinoma? This uh, last year in, 20, in the 23rd uh, CROI meeting, it was uh, demonstrated that uh, uh, the risk for hepatocellular carcinoma in people that were um, medicated with, with tenofovir, their risk for hepatocellular uh, carcinoma was stable. But in those not in including tenofovir, the risk had increased. What about co-infection with HIV and HIV? It's common because of what? Of the similar ways of transmission of, uh, for both viruses. Compared with H uh, HIV mono-infected patients, HIV, HIV co-infected patients have a more progression, rapid progression of liver fibrosis and remain at a higher risk for hepatocellular carcinoma and hepatic decompensation. Even treated with art, their chronic toxicity, persistent immune dysfunction and ongoing substance use contribute to accelerated cause of liver disease. What kind of uh, um, uh, um, uh, disease, uh, how, how worse uh, can be the liver disease? After 10 to 15 years, uh, 15 to 25 percent of HIV, HCV patients develop cirrhosis whose prognosis is very poor. Their survival after the first episode of decompensated cirrhosis is around 13 months compared to what? 48 months in the mono-infected patients. First year survival is 54% versus 74% comparing with mono-infected patients. Two-year survival, 40% for HIV versus 61% uh, for HIV and infected, uh, HIV and infected. Um, Five-year survival, 25% versus 44%. That's very bad. We need, uh, and every, every time we, we speak about it, we need uh, teams and coordinated teams and multidisciplined uh, teams of clinicians. Because um, uh, you know that uh, co-infection HIV, 90% of deaths in HIV patients with end-stage st liver disease are due to HIV. It's the leading cause of non-AIDS-related death. More advanced liver disease stages in HIV, HIV co-infected patients are strongly associated with a higher risk for HCC and liver and non-liver-related death. HCC appears at a younger age. 
shows a more advanced stage at diagnosis and has five-fold increase of death compared to HIV mono-infected patients. Before art, it was curious. HIV-related mortality exceeded mortality related to HIV. But with art advent, it's the contrary. HIV patients live longer, and liver-related mortality is attributed mainly to HIV co-infection. So although art is essential to HIV control, it will not be enough, and we have to treat HIV. It's needed, the therapy. As you know, recent advances in HIV therapy have been very revolutionary, and through currently approved, uh, safe, and effective oral or tolerable direct acting antivirals combinations emerge the opportunity to what? To reach high rates of cure without treatment, limiting adverse events. SVR rates are similar, similar to those obtained in HIV uninfected patients. Reduce significantly the risk of end-stage liver disease, preventing fibrosis progression and complications, and affect dramatically natural history of HCV in co-infection. You know that several studies have been uh, having taken place, uh, not exactly in real life data. We have some of those, and if applied to naive treat, uh, patients or experienced patients or non cirrhotic patients or cirrhotic patients, the the SVR uh, uh, rates are between 83 and 98, which is quite pretty good. As you know, uh, guidelines from ISL and AASLD recommend that treatment and retreatment algorithms for HIV, HIV co-infected patients follow those of HIV mono-infected patients. I'm not going to, to talk about because next speaker will do it certainly much more than me. But um, I, I will uh, um, ask your attention for the specific recommend, recommended rules that are daily daclatosvir plus sofosbuvir with or without ribavirin is an advisable regimen when uh, antiretroviral regimen changes cannot be made to accommodate alternative HCVDAA. And please don't interrupt art to allow HCV therapy. Please don't use treatment courses shorter than 12 weeks and never forget to check, recognize, and manage drug interactions between antiretroviral and DAAs because there is real, a real um, need to have a, 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 a special expertise to, um, in managing drug and drug interactions. But we have the help of those tables. And with them, we can cross drug interactions between uh, direct acting antivirals and antiretroviral drugs. Management of important uh, related liver complications, although it is reasonable to manage complication as in HBV or HIV mono-infected subjects, there is a clinical profile of decompensated cirrhosis and the effectiveness of particular measures that can be different in the co-infected population. Ascites, for example, is the most frequent first hepatic decompensation event of cirrhosis. But in HIV, it's uh, so frequent as 60% uh, versus 23 uh, to 38% in only HCV population. Hepatic encephalopathy is... Uh, uh, has a high incidence, 28% in HIV, compared to 1 to 8% on in immunoinfected individual as initial complication of cirrhosis. 
is the leading cause of liver-related mortality, even under art, responsible for 50% of related uh, death. Why? After the first episode, median survival is only three months. We don't know why. Hepatorenal syndrome is the second cause of the death due to liver disease. Don't forget that albumin infusion with vasoactive drugs may completely reverse renal failure in 60% of cases. But don't, don't uh, remember, please, uh, don't forget that liver transportation is the only effective therapeutic option. And spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Most of the cases are due to Shirchikale and Streptococcus. Portal hypertensive gastrointestinal bleeding is uncommon in end-stage liver disease in the HIV setting. Why? We don't still know. In patients surviving a first bleeding episode, Please don't forget that the secondary prophylaxis with beta blockers and band ligation is the most adequate option. When to refer HIV co-infected patients to liver transplant? Are there, since widespread use of art and the advent of new DAA combinations, liver transplantation has become the option uh, of treatment for end-stage liver disease in this setting. As mortality after the first hepatic decompensation is high, liver transplantation should be considered early in the management of end-stage liver disease. MELT score, as uh, Solkowski and uh, uh, the collaborators showed, uh, it may be lower than in HIV uninfected patients. But anyway, 25% of HIV-infected patients selected liver candidates die. Die while in the waiting list and during the evaluation process. Why? Maybe they are too late referral to liver trans uh, transplant centers. Data of optimal timing for liver transplantation and specific prognosis score for HIV-infected patients are still missing. Are there any criteria for considering patients, HIV patients, potential candidates to liver disease, to liver transplantation? Yes, there are liver-related criteria, as, as you know. Uh, and general criteria, abstinence from drugs, heroin and cocaine for at least two years. We accept consumers methadone, uh, uh, no consumption of alcohol for at least six months. Favorable psychiatric evaluation, understanding of the techniques, social instability, and please women must not be pregnant. Are there specific criteria for considering HIV patients, potential candidates? Yes, clinical criteria, none of AIDS defining opportunistic infections whose treatment has no efficacy, no neoplasia requiring systemic chemotherapy, no multi resistant fungal infections, and immunologic criteria like CD4 cell counts between 100 and 200 cells and virologic criteria. The, uh, what we, de de we want is to have undetectable viral load at the time of transplant, but if it is not possible, effective and durable therapeutic uh, options for HIV infection during the post-transplant period. Thank you for your attention.